Well, our Heavenly Father, we are thankful today. We pray, Father, for those that we have lost that have been close to us this year from last Valentine's Day to this Valentine's Day. So many families have been touched. with the death of the COVID. Not because they died, we understand as believers, it, that's not that they, not, it's not just that they died, at least the ones I've talked to, it has been not being able to be with them because of the COVID restrictions not to be able to be with them as they departed. And they are really struggling with closure this year. I lift them before you, Father. We have talked to so many, tried to be an encouragement to them. We are so thankful for your love and mercy and grace to our life. I pray today, Father, for our nation. We need revival in the true sense of the old word, revival in our churches because they're the only one that can bring it to our nation. We are in need of a good old-fashioned revival where people's lives are so dramatically changed. That people around them, like the woman at the well, want to come and see and be informed how theirs can too. Where does it start? It starts with me. It is your will for sure. We need to be evangelical this year more than any year of our life as a church. So I pray, Father, you would help us have clarity how to bring revival to America. For I've made my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you'll open your Bibles now to 1 Thessalonians, our book study. First Thessalonians 1, I'm looking at verses 9 and 10 as we close out the first chapter. Remember, this little book is a great book. It's a basic book. This is a really young church, and they're doing marvelous things. And it's a book about soteriology, about the dynamics of salvation, how it changes a person's life. And eschatology, what is waiting for us at the end of our dispensation. And he combines them today in 9 and 10. For they themselves report about us. That is, you remember the model ministry that was going out of the Thessalonica church to all over their, their little world, be Greece and beyond. We talked about that last time. And so he's remarking on that, for they themselves report, that's where, where the, their ministry has gone and touched other people and places. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from, no, that was verse 8. For they themselves report about you, what kind of reception we had with you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve a living and true God. 
That's pretty amazing, isn't it? You don't see much, you know, in the, in the South for especially, uh, people grow up in, in good churches. They just grow up in them. So when it comes time for them to get saved, and, it, and it's difficult for a lot of people grow in the South to grow up in the, in the church, and they're very active in all the programs of the church to realize they have a need to be saved. I can tell you that. So when they get saved, the transition doesn't seem to be dramatic. It still should be because church doesn't build your church in, in its own entirety. The programs of the church don't build your relationship with God. It is the word of God, the Holy Spirit that do that. And if you're not saved, neither one of those two things work for you. You can memorize all the scriptures you want to memorize. They won't save you until you come to the gospel. And the conviction of the Holy Spirit about it, where he convicts you of sin, righteousness, and judgment. But for those people who grow up, grow up in the church, I had friends like that in the north who grew up in certain churches. Uh, you, you, when I went after I got saved, went back to talk to them. They, they could, they didn't know what I was talking about. Being born again, I had no idea. They were pretty content with their life and their religion. But for me, it was a dramatic change. I, I really was a sinner, knew I was a sinner, and I got saved. And that was a pretty amazing thing to me. Nobody else had offered me anything on grace. And my life dramatically, in, internally, my life changed dramatically. Not instantaneously, but within a year, my life was a completely different life. And I knew it. I knew I didn't know where in the Bible it told me that the love of God had been poured out in my heart, but I knew something had been. Something had caused it. Later, I looked at Romans, the fifth chapter, verse 5, and I found out at the moment of salvation, the love of God, because I live in the church age, the love of God was poured out by the Holy Spirit into my heart. And, and I just had a different view about stuff. You know, I, did, I couldn't explain it. The Word of God helped explain it. That's the wonderful thing about the Word of God. I, it bothers me that people, people who are born again don't love the Bible. It just, it just explains everything that's going on about your life. Well, anyhow, uh, how you turn to God from idols, paganism, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. And so I titled my sermon today, Serve and Wait. It was interesting to me that Paul summarized the Christian life in two words. He summarized the whole Christian life in two words. Serve and wait. That, that amazed me. I mean, I, if somebody had said, if I'd have had, to had a final in my theology school, summarize theology, uh, the Christian theology in two words, I, I'd have flunked. If those, <laughs> if those were the two words... He summarized the whole Christian experience in two words, serve and wait. I, I find that interesting to me. I mean, I, I hunt the Word of God all the time. I'm, it, it's, my, it's, it's my book to go to. I mean, I, 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 it's, I just love the Word of God. 
It's not because I'm a pastor either. Well, yeah, it's because you're a pastor. <laughs> I've loved the word of God since I got born again. I'd love the word of God. I'd love the word of God. No matter what I was doing, I love the word of God. Well, yeah, that's just me. Now, the word in verse 9, we have the word to serve. It should be an L in that word, dulios, like where you get the word, du, du, they, there should be a, an L in that word. That's where you get the word dulos, dule, is the word servant or slave. It's used in the infinitive to serve a living and true God. Just think about this. They, they, were, they were saved out of pagan idolatry. to serve a living, true God. And that was, when Paul writes that back to them, they knew what he was talking about. That, that may not be a, one of those lightning bolts in your life because you didn't come out of heathenism. But for someone who's come out of heathenism into Christianity, that's a light bolt. I can tell you that, to serve a living, true God. And boy, were they ever, were they ever. I was talking to a person the other day, got saved several years ago, went into carnality, is trying to get out of it. And I was sharing with that person about some young people out in the Moody area who are, and listen, they're getting saved. They're, they're get right? We give, every time one kid gets saved out in Moody, we give them a Bible. This church gives them a Bible, and John and them, the guys out there in that, on that team, write, write in it. We've given out a lot of Bibles. I was talking to somebody about that. I was saying, it's just so exciting to see somebody get saved and then understand what they've been saved from for and catch on fire. Just, I didn't say, oh, yeah, I was that guy one time. Yeah, I understand. I got saved and I was on fire. Went to camp, did all those things. Yeah. I said, well, wh what happened? Well, I don't believe in it anymore. I said, no, 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 no. I didn't say where, you get, where it took you. What, what happened in your life to get you off course? Uh, I know. Sin's hard to acknowledge. Let me tell you, sin's hard to acknowledge, especially when you made a lifestyle since you got saved. Let me tell you. You want that fire back in? Go back to the guy who gave it to you. I mean, he's waiting on you to come home. You want that fire back in you, prodigal boy? You want that fire back in you instead of, oh, no, what's going to happen to my life? I'm eating like a pig. I smell like a pig. I'm living like a pig. I'm just a pig, I guess. No, I'm not, I'm not a pig. I used to have that fire. I don't have that anymore. <laughs> eh? Well, did you leave God? Where'd that fire come from, son? The fire hasn't gone anywhere. You've left the fire. My, my, my. What's wrong with you? To serve a living and true God, in verse 10, to wait for his son from heaven. And to wait for his son from heaven. There, there, he summarized the whole Christian life on earth in two words. Serve and wait. What am I waiting for? Waiting for his son to return. What did we just say in the Eucharist? Until the Lord returns. I'm going to proclaim. <laughs> Serve and wait. How do you like those apples? Serve and wait. And I'll tell you, if you hit, if you hit spiritual maturity, those two words is what you live by. Serve and wait. 
You don't wait on what, what's, what the Lord's bringing tomorrow. You wait on the return of his son because you don't care what he brings to your life tomorrow. You don't care. <laughs> you don't care. Listen I, listen, I know who holds tomorrow. Same guy who holds today. The same guy who holds yesterdays and all my yesterdays. You know, Christianity is pretty simple, isn't it? It's not complicated. Serve and wait. And you're to serve until he returns. Is that the point? <laughs> it's also a present infinitive to wait. Let's talk. One, Paul made living out the Christian life in the world very simple. He said, serve the Lord and wait for the Lord. Paul explained early in 1 Thessalonians 1, 5 through 7, what qualifies a believer to serve. He said, you've got to be saved. You've got to become an imitator of the Lord. And you've got to begin to develop a model ministry. You've got to take on a ministry. Listen, one of the ministries that every person in here can do is your spiritually gifted ministry. And pay attention to it. It works in this church. It works with others. And you ought to pay attention how the Lord uses you with your spiritual gift. There's where you start. And then as you develop, he begins to, when you begin to share your life with other people, he's going to begin to develop models of ministry in your life. We talked about it. I'm not trying to tell you something that's scary. I'm just telling you this is how it goes. This is a normal process. Get saved, be an imitator, have model ministry. Right? Get saved, be an imitator of the Lord. Now, don't, this is how it works. Get saved, become an imitator of the Lord, and then begin to have modeled ministry. It's not just for guys like me and Al and Ernie and people like that. It's for everybody. It's everybody. The church, the, this little church, had, had just gone out into the world. They were just... How you have turned to God and found him a living, true God. Don't you love that idea? There's a message to the world. And to wait for his son from. It's ek plus the ablative of separation in the Greek language. From heaven. To wait for his son from heaven. Where are you? Earth. How about that? Then he says, whom he raised from, ek plus the separation, from the dead, that is Jesus who rescues us from, ek plus the ablative of separation, from the wrath to come. You know, people... There, there's such goofy stuff going. I say goofy. I, I, it only becomes goofy when you know the truth. <laughs> then you go like, oh, geez, I was kind of goofy. Some people have the church going into the tribulation. Some of people have it going halfway into the tribulation because they found out that it was divided in three and a halves, you know, two halves, three and a half, and three and a half. So they said, well, the first three years was kind of simple, so we'll put the Lord, we'll put the church in there the first three years, and then the raft is going to come the last. Listen, that whole seven-year period is called the raft. It's called the tribulation. It's Jewish age. Gee whiz. I just did a study on Daniel's 70 weeks. I did Daniel's 70th week. I did a whole study on it. (laughs) 
But I'm going to tell you, here's the Greek language, and here's what Paul said. What are you waiting for? You're waiting for the Lord. Listen, waiting, we are waiting for the Lord who will rescue us from the wrath to come. Ek plus the Abedev. I'm talking to first-year Greek students. Ek plus the ablative is ablative of separation. From. Separated from. My, my, my. Man, how many times do you have to hear it from the Word of God to believe it? Stop. I mean, let the Word of God teach you. Please note three prepositional phrases that are used. These are prepositional phrases that are connected with weight. Church age believers wait for the sun. Look, look up here. For, I mean, look in your text. From heaven. We're waiting for his son. There are three X. There are three froms. Well, please tell me. You say, just circle them so you can't miss them. Watch this. Church age believers wait for God's son from heaven. Secondly, Jesus raised Jesus, God raised Jesus from the dead, which led to his resurrection, ascension, and session. Acts 2.32. 2, 2, 2, then comes, these are sequences. Then comes the third. Jesus Christ rescues church age believers under the new covenant from the wrath to come. I mean, how simpler can you get than that? My, my, my. I know sometimes I, f I fuss about things that you probably don't even know and don't care about. <laughs> Other people's view of this. But, uh, I, you know, anyhow, somebody's w watching on the Internet and goes like, oh, no, oh, no, I'm not listening to him any longer because he doesn't believe in the mid-trip or something. I don't have, Listen, I can only tell you the truth. I can't make you believe it. I learned that a long time ago. Now, here's something else. Watch this now. This is why you come to this church. I'm going to break it down for you and teach it to you. Paul also connected two articular, that's definite article. In the Greek language, when you say, when you say articular, that means there's a definite article attached with it. Paul connects two articular present middle participles with it. For example, when it says, when he says, God raised Jesus from the dead, uh, Jesus, who, who rescues us, it's got a definite article with the word rescue, and it's a participle. It means the one who rescues. In other words, this is a title, the rescuer. The rescuer. <laughs> and what's he rescuing me from? The raft of what? The raft of what? <laughs> Thank you. I didn't write this stuff, but I'm sure going to read it. Right? The second coming of Christ is going to involve the rescuer. There's a definite article with it. And to come. Right? Paul made a doctrinal statement regarding church age believer when he said Jesus is the rescuer of the church age believer from the wrath to come. Paul explains that Jesus will return for the church as the rescuer at his second coming. Paul will later in the book of 1 Thessalonians explain in the fourth chapter, 13 through 18, how he's going to do it. <laughs> That's the way Paul writes. He gives you a heads up and then he gives it to you. That's just the way Paul writes. Think how these new Thessalonian new believers, think how far they have come in their knowledge of the word of God from pagan idolatrous history. 
Isn't that marvelous? My, my, they are so excited to hear the teachings of the Word of God. You, could, you couldn't edict. You couldn't put an edict out on them and them not go to church. Well, you might die. I, just, I was dead and I got raised. I was dead to Christ and now I'm alive. I serve a living and true God is greater than any edict. Paul connected the ascension and session of Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of God the Father in heaven to his second coming for the church with the statement, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. <laughs> That's such good stuff. What connection does Jesus in heaven have with the church of Jesus Christ on earth? He will be our rescuer. Our rescuer. Paul's answer, Jesus is the savior of the church. He's the head of the church, and he's the rescuer of the church. It <laughs> don't get better than that. Ephesians 5, 23. The husband, as the husband is the head of the wife, Christ is also the head of the church. He himself being the savior of the body. There's two titles. Husbands should love their wife. Happy Valentine. Just as Christ also loved the church, just as also, just as also, eat those beans. And gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her, cleanse her with the washing of the word so that they might, so that he might present to himself the church in all of her glory, having no spot, wrinkle or such thing, but that she should be holy and blameless. So husbands ought also to love their wife, own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. There's a Valentine's Day special. Jesus Christ is coming back for his beloved bride to rescue her from the wrath to come. He will rapture her into his presence, which will end the church age. Whoa. Point four, G Paul taught that when Jesus returns the second time, he will rescue from the raft to come. At the second coming, Jesus will be the rescuer. He will rescue us from the raft to come. Daniel, seventh week. You can go on our website if you want to study it. Some of you. I have studied with it. I'm speaking to those on the internet. Go to Doctrinal Studies and check it out. Read it for yourself. For the rest of us, we, we, get, we get quite a kick out of Acts 1, 9 through 11. This Jesus who, whom you've seen go up, you will see come back. That's pretty good. And if you want to read about the tribulation, then read Revelation 6 through 19. You won't be going through it, but... Maybe you'll have a buddy who will. Jesus, point five, Jesus will rescue the church from the raft to come just like he rescued the sinner from the raft of sin nature, of Adam's original sin nature. He's a rescuer on the front side. And he's a rescuer on the back side. Colossians 1, 13, in Adam all die, in Christ all are made alive. How do I get out of Adam into, in, in, into Christ? The gospel. Got to believe the gospel. And what will it do? It will rescue me from Adam's domain and deliver me over to the kingdom of Christ. Colossians 1.13. You guys, you know that. People in this church know that. You need to read Romans 5, 12 through 21. Jesus is the rescuer on the front side. He's the rescuer on the back side. I'd say that's pretty secure, wouldn't you? That's pretty secure. When he talks about the raft to come, this is not the raft that Jesus paid for on the cross 
like in John 3.36 or Romans 5, 8 through 11 or Ephesians 2, 2 through 3. He who believes in the Son has eternal life. He who does not obey the Son will not see life and the wrath of God abides on him. We're not talking about that wrath. Christ has rescued us from that. This is not the raft of the great white throne judgment of Revelation 20. And if, any name, if anyone's name was not written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. This, he's going to come back as a rescuer, and he's going to explain it to you in the fourth chapter in detail. Verses 13 through 18. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Remember to leave your offering on your way out because of the COVID restrictions, and then Rick will pledge us out. Let's stand. Gary, give me a, a prayer, if you would, to close this, and then we'll do a flag. How amazing you are. And yet you have written it down so we can see it, believe it, and live it. Thank you, Father, for a church that's not afraid to teach the mind of God and the work of Christ. Thank you for these things. May it never become second hand, but just another. Mm. Continue to bless the message of the one who delivers it to sense conviction. Thank you that you are the deliverer from the first day to the to the eternal. Thank you for this in Jesus' name. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.